hey guys, it's Glenn from glenscarcollection.com and this is my sixth year review of my BMW 1 Series M. I can't believe I've owned this car already for six years. Remember, if you like what you see on this channel, hit the subscribe button, like and share this video so our channel can grow, and as always, leave a positive comment below. Hit that notification bell because I post three videos every week, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 7 a.m. All right, so, uh, this video we'll go over quickly on the interior then we'll take it for a drive i'll do some acceleration runs and then at the end i'll tell you what i like and don't like about the one series m so the one series m regardless of what you see on the internet because there's some really good car reviewers that get all this information wrong this was only made one model year 2011 about 6,000 in the world and here in north america 740 of them uh came in three colors valencia orange like this one they all have the same black interior with orange stitching. The other two colors are uh, black sapphire and alpine white, but you still get the exact same interior. Uh, it's a nice interior. They took the one series interior, put some uh, Alcantara, put some stitching, fancied it up a little bit, but it's held up uh, pretty well over uh, since 2011. And I bought this car. I'll tell you why I chose this car and what other, what other cars I compared about it. We'll get into that in uh, a minute. So again, one year only. BMW didn't think, you know, I guess North America wanted an M version of the 1 Series. And uh, very few of these were made here. 740 cars, 309 are orange. The next most popular color is uh, Alpine White. And those are usually the cheapest. Uh, Valencia Orange, because it was the signature color, usually sells for the most. And then the rarest color is actually Black Sapphire. So the first car I actually almost bought, Black Sapphire, I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, years ago, maybe a year or two or so before I bought this, I went to, I found a Black Sapphire car in upstate New York, I'm in New Jersey, drove a couple hours to get there, confirmed that I was coming. They said they had it on a battery retainer, no problem. Got all the way up there and I couldn't drive the car. I never liked to buy a car, I never drove. And uh, battery retainer was disconnected or something, battery was dead. They're like, hey, can you come back Monday? I think it was a Saturday. And I'm like, you know, forget it. I think I bought the, uh, the Z3M Coupe instead or something. But uh, eventually I found this car and I searched the country and I found it about an hour and a half uh, with traffic because it was in the city, uh, about an hour, hour and a half from my home. So I wanted Valencia Orange, that's what I wanted. I have a black Sapphire Z3M Coupe. So I wanted, uh, I like bright colors obviously if you follow the channel. So we're running the car here just so the oil can warm up. Obviously it uses thick oil like most M cars, so you really have to have the engine running for about 20 minutes before you can do any kind of acceleration. So we'll go over uh, real quickly on the interior and uh, then we'll take it for a drive. All right, now we'll take a look at the interior. GoPro, start recording. All right, so you have your typical uh, M steering wheel here, nice and thick. And it really feels great in your hands. Now this was before like my M2 when you had heated steering wheels. So these didn't, they don't have that in this car. <laughs> then you have your radio controls here. Still have a CD in 2011. And then obviously you have your Bluetooth. Bluetooth works really well. Uh, mine has all the options. So you have the navigation. There's no rear camera now in 2011, but you do have rear sensors, which were optional. My car is fully loaded, so it does have that. So here's the, uh, I guess, making the one series interior a little fancier with the Alcantara and the stitching. Uh, I have the optional Harman Kardon, which is a very good stereo. I guess here's where you would put your CDs. And I think you can, I think it has the hard drive so you can burn into the CDs. You have storage here with the glove box. This is your cup holder. This is actually removable. So obviously this was an afterthought, but I'll tell you it's better than the Porsche cup holders. Stereo sounds really good in a small car like this. We have just over 19,000 miles and we have a red line of roughly 7,000 RPM. Very easy to heel toe. Uh, the, the shifter is nice and short. My friend had an E90 sedan, not an E90 M3, and he got the short throw shifter. I tried it, it felt exactly the same as this. So this is standard. Great news is it only comes with a six speed manual. And as I like, all the cars are slick tops. There is no such thing as a sunroof. You have your start stop on. I have the keyless entry, so this actually comes out. I, I guess you can't come out while you're going. You have to shut it off. You can keep this in your pocket. You do not have to keep it in there. I just do that so I don't lose the key. I'm always searching my pockets for it. And uh, so that's what I do for uh, for that. Now, unfortunately, so here's your iDrive controllers. 
I forget which version of iDrive is, but it's probably the first decent iDrive. Before that, I hated iDrive. This is very, very easy to use. And of course, you have a back button, which makes it very easy. You have your plugs here. So you have your USB, uh, your auxiliary. And now the problem is for radar detectors, or at least for me, for radar detectors, this is the only outlet. You don't have a smoker's package or something that gives you one in the front. So I got one of these adapters, and then I put this down to the side here on the carpeting and then I can plug in the radar detector there. I always drive with a radar detector in Waze, so that's probably the only inconvenience. Uh, back seats are pretty good for smaller adults or children. Uh, it would be a little tougher for me to fit back there. GoPro, stop recording. All right, before we go for a drive, let me tell you some of the cars we compared it to. Well, I've owned two E46 M3s, an E90 M3, I owned this at the same time. I think when I bought it, I still owned my E90 M3. And even though they had similar performance, zero to 60 of about four and a half seconds, this felt faster. And I think the reason why is this turbocharged, not normally aspirated, and the power is available down low, unlike the E90, E92 M3, where you gotta get to about 5,500 RPM to the party starts. Now this red line is about 7,000. It's not 8,400 like the, uh, the M3 is, but Let's go over the differences and why I, I love, listen, I love the E90 M3, I love mine, I had mine for six years. I've had this for six years, so those are the two longest I ever had a car, that and a 996 C4S, because I love those cars. The 996 C4S I bought in 2006, it was an 02, I bought it used in 2006. Economy tanked in 08, was terrible for years, so I kept that car six years because I would have lost too much money. It sank so much, I had to wait till it started going back up before I could sell it. But the two cars I loved, and the reason I kept six years, is this car and the E90 M3, and I'll tell you the differences between the two. So this started at 47,000, this full, fully loaded is uh, 54,500. It's within $10, $20 of uh, fully loaded my 2016 M2. Now this has basically the M3 competition package, uh, steering, suspension, wheels, tires. So they're 245, 35, 19s in front, 265, 35, 19s in the rear. Uh, if you wanted a set of four S's, I have Super Sports on this. I've replaced the tires since I've owned it. And uh, the four S's run you about 1100, 1200 bucks if you got them from a discounter like Tire Rack. Now this car doesn't have a four liter V8 naturally aspirated like the E92 M3 has. This actually has a three liter twin turbo inline six. Produces 335 horsepower, which is very conservative. Motor Trend tested it and got about 330 to the wheel. So it's really producing probably 383, 90. And it's a lot lighter than the M3, which we'll get into in a second. This has 370 foot-pounds of torque. You press the sport button, you get over boost, 370 foot-pounds of torque for 10 seconds, which you don't have on the E90 M3. That's 414 horsepower, but it's got to make the power up high, 295 foot-pounds of torque. Now this is four inch, uh, nine inches shorter than the E90 M3, this is 172 inches. The E90 is like 181 and change, almost 182. This is actually, what makes this car so lively compared to that car, four inches short in the wheelbase, 104 inches instead of 108 for the E90 series M3. And it's 300 pounds less, 3340, 3340 as opposed to 3650. Similar zero to 60 time, 4.5 seconds, I've driven them back to back. This always felt faster to me, but they're both fantastic cars. If you like normally aspirated engines better, you're gonna like the M3 better. If you like power down low and torque and uh, just uh, hair on fire handling all the time, you're gonna like this better because the M3 is a heavier car, especially when you drive them back to back. Now, now mileage, so my E92 M3, my E90 M3, I got 17 miles a gallon. Here I get 19 and a half and I drive them the same. Why? Because we have a six cylinder turbo instead of a, a V8 engine. All right, we are finally ready to drive. Now, my next car probably will be an E90 or E92, but I'm not selling this. Is the GoPro on? GoPro, start recording. I don't know if it's on. GoPro, start recording. All right, it is on. All right, so let's go for a little spin. Now, my car only has 19,000 miles, so of course it's reliable. Only thing I've had to do for this car, just basic maintenance. So this was still on the BMW four year 50,000 mile maintenance. So the maintenance was free. So you should be a car that actually had a good life 
uh, with all the maintenance done because it was free. So I don't think that should be an issue. Hopefully you had an owner uh, like me, I'm the second owner that cherished it, that took care of it. I've done all the routine maintenance. Only thing I had to do outside of that, obviously wear and tear is replace the tires. You can tune these cars. You can get a cop tune that raises that 370 uh, foot pounds of torque to 450 and it's only like 600 bucks for the tune, maybe $1,000 or something like that. So you can make this an incredibly uh, powerful car. A lot of people race these cars. I've seen them at autocrosses where people get fastest time of the day. That's how car this good this car is in the hands of a good driver. The E90 Series M3 is a little more grown up. The E46 M3 is an older car. So kind of what I think this car kind of splits the difference between say the latest and greatest M3 M4 and the E46 M3. The E46 M3 is an old car. You're not going to drive it saying, oh, it's like brand new. Even my car that's in great shape, you're not going to mistake it for a new car. On the other hand, I own the entire time I had my uh, M2, and if I told you this was the new car, not the M2, you would believe me. They both drive and act like new cars. The only thing you're not going to have here is you're not going to have a backup camera. So you can get the sensors, they're optional. Again, that's an option. So some of them don't have the backup sensors. The iDrive works, you know, the navigation works, so you have Bluetooth. So you really have all your modern conveniences. The ride is really good. I think BMW does, this is a real bumpy road and my my thing is acting up, so it's shaking more than normal. But uh, it's a really, really good car. The ride is really good. You can easily, just like the M2, make this a daily driver. I've had a Z3 M Coupe, S54 M2, two E46 M3s, including my current one, an E90 M3, a couple M cars I can't remember, and I thought this was the best one, honestly. And that's why I still have this and I will always have this. I've had this car six years, could I loved it? Same reason I had my E90 M3, could I loved it? I would have had my E46 M3 forever, but that first one was stolen. So you know that's why last year I bought another one. Collectability, these cars have become very collectible. I bought this car for under sticker price because I bought it at the right time six years from now, six years ago. When they came out, I remember my local BMW dealers were asking 20 or 30 over sticker. I had my E90 M3 at the time and I wanted to buy this, but I, you know, the E90 M3 wasn't probably worth anything at that time, six years ago. And, you know, people wanted, uh, dealers wanted 70 or 80,000 to walk out the door with this one. When I put this car up for sale, when I lost my job in 2017, I everything was kind of for sale, and this car I definitely didn't want to sell, but I got offers in the $65,000 range. Uh, since then, I've got offers 65 to 70,000 with a car like this, Valencia Orange, which holds the most value uh, with 19,000 miles. <laughs> Now, I do have an exhaust on this car. So you've been hearing uh, accelerations, and that's not stock. Stock, this car is pretty quiet. And this car is, another thing I love about this car, it doesn't have the fake pumped-in sound. And I think this car is one of the reasons why they do faked pump-in sound. And the, re and the reason why I say that is, I always get compliments of how great this car sounds when I pull up to a Cars and Coffee or drive with my friends, but I don't hear, with the windows closed here, we don't hear anything. Uh, we'll do some acceleration runs in a minute, and uh, then you tell me how loud you hear it, but obviously I'll play some exhaust sounds for you too, and you'll, you'll see the difference in sound. Now some would argue that, uh, you know, M cars should be normally aspirated, and I would normally agree until I drove this car. I also like the F80 M3, the new M5, so you've seen all that. I do prefer normally aspirated, but I just love the small package that this car is. I love that it's based on the 1 Series and essentially has the M3 competition package on it. It's a while, it uses thick oil, like I mentioned, so you really have to drive this car for 15 minutes or so before uh, you get anything that has to do with uh, warm enough oil. You know, I don't have problems with my M cars because I always warm them up before I start accelerating. Now, 
Now this car also has quick steering. So most cars are three turns lock to lock. This is about two. So if ever, you've ever driven a Mitsubishi Evo, you know what, what I'm talking about. Very, very quick steering on this car. Now the N54 engine, you can make uh, big power. You decide how reliable your car should be. I think if you keep this car stock, it'll be uh, pretty reliable. You're always gonna have some repairs, obviously, if, as you get into higher mileage, that's to be expected. Very nice short throws with the sh uh, shifter. Clutch is nice and easy. Very easy to heel toe. I have a size 13 feet, so maybe it's a little easier for me, but I can uh, heel toe no problem. This car will be the star of your cars and coffee. You know, there's 25,000 E90X M3s, 25,000 E46 M3s here in North America, and you only have 740 uh, 1 amps. Let's do a little, that slow guy is gonna ruin our acceleration, so we'll try to go this way. I would definitely buy this car again, I think because of the small numbers. Cars usually start hitting their collectability when they're 20 years old, like my 993 Turbo did, and then they reach their peak at around 30 years old. So I think this car has a long time to still go up in value, so you still have time to get one, but I would get one before uh, 2031 when they're 20 years old. Here we got some fresh pavement. We can do a little acceleration on the highway here. Values, like I said, this car is probably worth pushing 70,000 with a mileage. Now we're gonna come down here because I can do a better acceleration. 